Honest, J. Nowak. Oh yeah. A pleasure to meet all at last, and welcome back to Flying with the Foam on HJN for the last time. Yeah, the literal last time. Seeing as it's now April 2021, about three months after I began all of this incredible stuff right here, I'd say that the timing is pretty much perfect for me to go back into that patio and start recording more HGN material because I've not really gotten too much of a likelihood to go back in there because of the constantly shifting temperature changes and radical climate sort of progression that we've been enduring for the last few years. So, again, lots of things are bound to change, but that patio is where I'm going first thing tomorrow. So, expect more HGN content to come out first thing tomorrow. But to top this all off, darn it, I guess that's the first time that's happened. Well, let's try clapperboarding it again. That's more like it. So here we go for number 677. Whoops. That I did not meant, mean to happen. So here we go. Another Super Blaster from the Super lineup. But Elite 2.0 is not. This is the Echo. Basically their own version of the recreation of the Recon, Retaliator, Avalanche, Sierra Major, and all that good stuff that revolves around the classic modular accessory sort of blaster that we've known and loved since day one. Seeing that the Recon was in fact one of the first ever nerf blasters I picked up, i really got to say that there's certainly been a lot of stuff going on since then. So basically speaking, the Echo right here does a pretty good attempt at trying to revive a nice blaster from that era. The way that I see this... I mean, wow. There's really a lot of things I might have to say about this, so I guess it's an appropriate farewell to Honest Jane Nowak and Flying with the Foam and all that good stuff. I might as well get started by talking about the Core Blaster itself. Alright, so, starting off with this. This is basically just what you think it is. A recreation of, well, all those blasters that I pretty much mentioned. It's as simple as that. A blaster that has a slide on the top, except it's a lot smaller here in comparison to all the others. The Recon, Retaliator, Avalanche, and Sierra Major had fairly large sized ones to accommodate different hand sizes, but this one is a little smaller than you might imagine. But it's not to say that it's a bad one. It actually does pretty good slides back and forth not all the way fluently like all the other ones oh that's not good well okay that was weird let's try it again ah there we go that was just kind of a little problem right there I don't know really know how that happened for the love of how is it that a lot of these things keep breaking down on me when I go to film stuff? Like, you know what? Heck with this. I'm just going to leave this whole thing open. Man, it's the first time I opened that jam door, too. And, man, that thing is freaking broke off. Wow. I guess that makes for even more stuff that I ever had to, set about, to say about this thing in general. So, you might want to brace yourself because, well, I'm not even close to being done with this thing. The slide is small on this thing. It's somewhat bland given to the fact that the Super's color scheme is entirely composed of teal, bright orange, light gray and black, and a little bit of white here and there. And I say that it's bland because it's a little simple in a way. Modulus had some great stuff going for it. Zombie Strike and Mega were also loaded with colors here and there, as well as different patterns and the like. But look at how much teal there is on here. There's little to no, like, detailing, including stripes or dots or something like that. But another thing about this, 
is the kind of magazine that it comes with. This is basically your typical 10 dart magazine. And we've had 10 dart magazines before, but not necessarily like this. I especially remember the fact that the Demolisher actually came with something like that. But you know what? This one right here is an entirely different story. Never really had a straight magazine like this, apart from maybe the Fossa or the like. Off the top of my head, that's probably all I can identify here. Also, in terms of all that, this little piece right here, basically, well, it can come off, pretty much. Oh, there we go. Yeah, a removable little, like, piece of plastic that you can attach onto this to signify that this is, in fact, a super styled magazine, so. Well, that's mostly the core blaster, pretty much. But the thing is, is that if you remember other times where that I've talked about super blasters, you might know that, well, wow, I still have the corrector alongside me. I reviewed this days ago, and yet it's still right here, right where I left it. Well, you know what? I guess it might as well be time that, well, I give this thing what it wants. Accessories. Honestly speaking, it doesn't really look too good on the corrector, but that's mostly because they're not necessarily meant to be, well, meant for all the looks. I mean, look at how flush it is between the borderlines of, well, all these other attachments when you look at this. Look at how flush this side is. And then, of course, you have the same thing over here. And the tack rail is pretty much in the way. But you know what? That's probably not really a complaint that's not entirely meant for it. Of course, you can't really go wrong with the fact that a recon or other blaster like that happens to have a barrel or stock adapter on it. And this thing sure did deliver on that, which is good news. Otherwise, I would not have been aware that this was meant to be another version of, well, the Recon CS6 of some sort. Because we've had a lot of those types of blasters out there in the last, like, decade or so, which is pretty crazy how things have passed by and flown since day one. History really does pass by when you least expect it. But the Echo itself, let's look at the attachments individually. First, let's go for the stock. It's pretty much your standard stock with a tack rail on top. It's not like I've never seen that before. Then, the barrel. Look at this thing. Look at all of the tack rails on here. One, two, three, four. That's a lot of tack rails on here. That's even more proof that I need to, pr to tell you guys that Super must be giving Modulus a run for its money. I mean, that's crazy. In total, this whole blaster has five tack rails, one in the stock, four on the barrel, but none on the core blaster, which is pretty strange. I mean, I don't really want to say that that's a bad idea. I mean, look at all these tack rails. When you put this entire blaster together, you have all these things to use. So basically speaking, five tack rails is pretty nice. But guess what? Yeah, Slam Fire is on this one. Man, that is incredible. I mean, when have we ever seen that happen in a recon blaster? Every time you try to Slam Fire a recon, then well, nothing really happens. Then, of course, there might be a time where the Retaliator might have a problem of that sort, or the Avalanche, or maybe something else in general. But, let's just say that the Sierra Major pretty much had a thing going for it of the same exact sort of concept, design aspect, and the like. Slam fire on this. Still, that's pretty strange. Well, it's not to say that it's alone, because... Well, let's go ahead and give the corrector some time for the last time, pretty much. Ah, 
Yeah. Same exact thing that's going on. You got slam fire on both of these blasters. As insane as that kind of sounds, I mean, I don't really know if they're actually going to be going for this this time around. Because Super has kind of been a little bit more than just dormant. It's almost like Hasbro might actually be trying to take a bit of a hiatus from the series. But chances are, if they are going to be coming back with any more of these, then you never really know. They might introduce new things to it that we are not expecting. But for a series that has only 8 blasters so far, I cannot necessarily, well, guarantee that Super really is going to be going any farther. Because look at how much we already got. And albeit that I don't really have every single blaster out here to talk about, nor have I talked about every single one of them from the get-go, I really do have to be honest. Hopefully it doesn't suck for me. Because this sure has been pretty strange. I mean, you got a lot of tack rails on the attachments of the Echo, but when you're trying to use it as a standalone piece, you get no tack rails. Not even on the slide, which would have been stupid anyways, but I feel like... Well, something would probably be better than just nothing at all. Nonetheless, I'd say this is probably an okay blaster by many standards today, given to the fact that it has some decent performance going on. And once again, it might not hit its mark on 85 feet, like it claims on the box, but I guess it's a little hard to identify with it right now. But overall... The Echo sure is kind of a high note to end on because it is one strange piece of plastic that I've known for some time. It hasn't even been a year since Super came out, which was the Elite 2.0. But the thing is, we could probably expect a lot more things to come by from Hasbro that are just not necessarily as fulfilling as we might expect. So... Here we go. 87 blasters I've talked about. 87 pieces of HJN material to work with. 87 continuous days of talking about this kind of stuff. I've pretty much taken it an extra mile or two compared to After Saw It. Reviewing these things in great detail and probably a lot more honest sort of looks. So... That's pretty much just a good exercise of how things can possibly get when it comes to Honest Chain Nowak related media. But, I will see you guys tomorrow, back at the patio, with some more subjects to talk about for regular HGN. That is, until the next time this thing basically dictates that there is going to be another section of HGN dedicated to another little nifty trend that I might just want to jump on. So... Here we are. If you want to see more go down on my channel, then make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.